Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obueda. Thank you. We well, thank you for the you for your word. We well, thank you for what you're sharing with us in this prayer school. Sweet Holy Spirit, have your way in this prayer school. Minister to us, minister to people. Give, give wisdom, direction concerning prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen. Glory be to God. Today is day one of the prayer school, and I believe that the Spirit of God will be sharing some things with us about prayer. And today in this prayer school, we're going to look at Jesus, a man of prayer. Jesus, a man of prayer. Jesus understood the efficacy, the power, the energy that comes from the place of prayer, that comes from a place of prayer. You cannot successfully do what God has called you to do if you avoid prayer. You cannot successfully carry out your divine assignments if you avoid prayer. Prayer is your edge because it gives you an opportunity to speak to the Father. Prayer is your edge. And God wants us to get to a point where we see prayer as a way of life. Not just what we do and go to God when they have problems. Maybe they have problems in their marriage, in their job, in their business, in their relationship. They could go to God's them solution to deal with the situation. But this prayer school is to help us to cultivate a lifestyle of prayer. That this is how you live your life. You're to live from the place of prayer. You are to live, manifest from the place of prayer. And when a person is not in the place of prayer, the activities of the flesh will keep increasing. One of the ways you bring the flesh under control is to enjoy fellowship with the Father through prayer. Prayer shouldn't be something like that is a burden to us. Prayer should not be like something that is a burden or a stress to us. Prayer should be something we enjoy. If you are like me, I enjoy to relate to people, like to talk to people. And when you have a very good friend, you want to talk to that friend, you want to share, like today, a friend of mine that we have not spoken for more than 27 years called me today. I was so glad. Oh, where are you? For over 27 years. I was glad. And for any relationship to work, communication is the life of that relationship. So, Prayer is a communication that is filled with God's word. That's one of my definitions of prayer. Prayer is a communication 
that is filled with the word of God. If you're going to be effective in the place of prayer, you need to know what God has said concerning what you're praying about. If I pray contrary to the will of God, it means I won't get the results I'm looking for. So Jesus was a man of prayer, and he prayed according to the will of God. It's not every prayer that God answers, because it's not every prayer that originate from his word. The, the prayer that people do, they're praying from their experience, but they're not praying from God's word. The knowledge of God's word will produce boldness in the place of prayer. The, the knowledge of God's word should produce boldness in the place of prayer, you know, a, a place of prayer is not a place to beg God. A place of prayer is not a place where we beg God to do something. A place of prayer is not a place where we beg God to do something. It is a place where we pray according to his word. You see, God can only walk by his word. I want to say that again. I said, God can only walk by his word. The word of God is God's jurisdiction. The word of God is where God functions from. He doesn't function outside of his word. His word can be considered as his limitation. So God does not have an operation outside of his word. This is why you could e easily judge or know when God is part of something. I want to say that again. I said you could easily judge or know when God is part of something, you could easily judge it. You could easily know when God is part of it. Because God will always function according to his word. So Jesus was a man of prayer. He placed value on prayer. I'd like us to go to Mark Gospel, chapter 1, verse 35. Gospel, chapter 1, verse 35. The, the assignment of Jesus could have not been possible if he was not in the place of prayer. In Mark, chapter 1, verse 35, he said, And in the morning, rising up a great while before the day, he went out and departed into a certain place and there he prayed. Why did Jesus pray? He's the son of God. But why is he still praying? It will be difficult to walk with God if you're not in the place of prayer. I want to say that again. I said, it should be difficult to walk with God if you're not in the place of prayer. It should be difficult to have a flow of the things of the Spirit if you fail to function from the place of prayer. And Jesus understood that the manifestation of the miraculous is directly related to how he presents himself to the Father. How, how he's able to present 
himself to the Father. You see, if God is going to walk through you, God wants to walk in you. Hmm. Wow. If God is going to walk through you, he first has to walk in you. And the place of prayer, the place of prayer is the place to cultivate spiritual stamina. Or we can say spirit, there are inspiration we encounter from the place of prayer. A praying person that have the knowledge of God's word will be sensitive to the word of God. A praying person who have the knowledge of God's word will be sensitive to the will of God. You'll be able to know what the will of God is for this phase of my life, for this or for that. There are a lot of Christians who are, they are still babies. Even they have been born again for 20 years or for 30 years, they are still babies because you can see it in their action, their decision, the things they do. You know, they, they are still coming up in the things of the Spirit. When you begin to spend time with God, There is a tendency of Jesus was successful because he knows how to spend time with God. Because as you spend time with him, he will give you insight, understanding, revelation of how to flow. He will give you insights. He will give you revelation. How to flow. And because this is the place where he can cultivate the presence of God and have an experience that will change the lives of people when he comes from the place of prayer. There's the difference between ministry from the place of prayer. You can see the difference when someone ministers from the place of prayer. There is a dimension the move the spirits that will be available. And this is why Jesus spent a lot of time alone with God. A lot of time alone with God. Why? Because that is the place to get the strengths. You can't build a successful business without God. Because there are several factors that have potential to distract you from unlocking your possibilities. There are several factors that can keep you away from the manifestation of what God wants business. You need God in building a successful relationship. You need the wisdom of God in parenting. You need revelation of the will of God to function according to God's purpose. So the place of prayer is the place where you decide the future. I want to say that again. I said the place of prayer It's the place where you decide when prayer becomes your way of life. Nothing can be impossible to your vision. When it becomes your way of life, it is, it is impossible for a man because there is something about the atmosphere of prayer that brings you into a place of influence and control. You, you, you can control the climate, the atmosphere. 
you, you, you can control the elements, factors. Because from the place of prayer, you can begin to control things. There are spiritual activities that your eyes can see, but when you're in the place of prayer, you could control those activities. When you're in the place of prayer, you know, when Jesus spent quality time praying, the next thing you're going to see is that there are miracles, there are healings, there are signs and wonders. Do you know why we have a lot of false prophets? False prophets don't pray. <laughs> they don't pray. False prophets depends on which craft on schemes to do things. This is what when you come from the place of prayer. Because in the place of prayer, consecration is going on. One of the benefits of spending time in place of prayer is that your flesh is subjected and there are things you cannot do. There are things you cannot do. When you start spending quality time with God, there are things you wouldn't do. You don't even need a message on it. You just know that this is wrong. The more you spend time in the place of prayer, the more sensitive you will be towards the presence of God. You'll be more sensitive to his anointing. And, and this is the difference between Jesus and a lot of people because he knew what it means to be alone with God. You're able to get direction. Most times people are looking for direction like, was sharing he said that direction is how you fulfill that vision vision is the unfolding of god's plan divine direction is how you fulfill that vision vision is the unfolding he said when you're praying the plans of god will, will be unfold to you they will just start coming and while you're praying you have access to divine direction. You have access to divine direction because as you pray, especially when you pray based on the word of God, like one of my definitions of prayer, like I told you, is that prayer is a communication that is filled with God's word. Prayer. a communication that is not filled with nagging. Prayer is not filled with anxiety and fear. Oh Lord, you know I'm afraid of these people. Oh Lord, please don't let them kill me. You see, there, there are a lot of prayers that people do that is not really prayer. You have to pray from a place of understanding. I said, you have to pray from the place of understanding, especially understanding of the finished work of Jesus. There are certain prayers who shouldn't pray. How can you tell God to watch over you when he said, I will not leave you nor forsake you? Wow. Yes, sir. I will not leave you nor forsake you. He's with you. So when you pray, oh God, give me victories over my enemies. But the word of God said, I don't know if you're getting this. There is, we need to pray from the finished work of Jesus. You know, somebody said, oh God, I pray you deliver me from the devil. You have authority over the devil. You see, there are, there are a lot of prayers going on that is not really prayer. The standing of the New Testament will help your prayer life. 
Your understanding of the New Testament will help your prayer life. There are some prayers in the book of Psalm that were not expected to pray because Jesus has fulfilled the law. There are prayers in the book of Psalms that we don't need to pray. You know, like somebody said, Arise, O God, let your enemies be scattered. He said he made an open show of principalities and powers. Read Colossians. Everybody here should read the book of Colossians. It's just four chapters. In the book of Psalms, they, they, they said it's scattered. For the days of that Psalms, it was okay. But for our days, the enemies already defeated, we were expected to enforce our victory. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Colossians 1. Verse 12 and 13. If you don't pray from what Jesus has already done for you, you may end up praying things that are not in line with God's word. This is why you need to read the book of Colossians, Ephesians. Why important is these books? Most things that Paul said came out of his encounter with Jesus. Paul said, you know some preachers, but they're not talking about the message of Jesus. It was not the message of Paul. It was God who gave utterance, who gave insight of his word to Paul to bring the message of the finished work to the people. Jesus was done with the job. And this man called Saul had conversion in Acts chapter 9, and then he started unveiling revelation about the new about the new creation, about our inheritance, giving him those things to write to the churches. He was giving him those revelations. It is not Paul's revelation. It's the revelation of Jesus communicated through Paul. So when you read the book of Ephesians and Colossians, you begin to see where he said, in whom? In him. And those words are very important. In whom we have redemption. If people are not praying and praying understanding, they may end up praying things that they already have freedom from, but they are still praying about it. <laughs> wow. The victory of Jesus has become our inheritance. The victory of Jesus has become our inheritance. You know what the enemy wants you to do? The enemy wants you to begin to pray, oh God, I want you to do this. Oh God, I want you to do that. That is why praying in the Spirit is the best way to pray. God, when you pray in the Spirit, you pray the perfect will of God. When you pray in the Spirit, sorry, When you pray in the Spirit, you pray the perfect will of God. But when you're praying understanding, you must make sure you pray according to what Jesus has done. If you pray according to what Jesus has done, you are enforcing your dominion. Imagine, let's say, for instance, someone is sick and will say, oh God, come and heal this person. That's not the right prayer to pray. Oh God, come and heal the person. That's not the right prayer to pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now. You, you get to know what kind of spirit that is causing that problem. As in the name of Jesus, take your hands off that person. If you watch Acts chapter 3, when Peter and John saw the man at the beautiful gate, look at what Peter said. He said, see and go, none I have. That was what he said. But such as I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. He never said, oh God, come down and heal this man. He never said that. Because we already have the authority. We already have the anointing. And we need the leading of the Spirit to carry out the operation. Peter never said, oh God, come down and heal this man. He ministered the healing power of God to the man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So sometimes when we say it, God, please come down and cast our devils. It's not God that will cast our devils. It's we that will cast our devils. He said, in my name, cast our devil. He didn't say in my name. God will do it. He said, in my name, cast it out. That means the response. No, let you say, oh, God, please come and cast out this devil from this man. God cannot come down to cast out the devil. He has given you the authority in the name of Jesus to do the job. We are in charge. We decide what happened. <laughs> wow. I said, we are in charge. We decide what happened. Imagine you have a son of 20 years old and you're still changing his diapers. You won't be happy. You won't be glad, I'm telling you. You won't be glad. You'll be angry. Grow up. That's what my father used to tell me many years ago. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> Grow up. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we, we, we need to grow up in understanding and in knowledge. Glory be to God. To grow up in understanding. You know, this is why you need to pray Ephesians 1 verse 17 and 18. That God will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the know. Level of the revelation knowledge available to us. Your level of operation is directly related to the revelation knowledge available to you. Your level of your, your, your operation. There are many Christians right now who are battling with generational causes. They believe in that message and they are having it, they are battling with it. Someone told them they got a curse. They have been dealing with it. They have been dealing with this curse. They have been dealing with that. Now, let me tell you this. One of the ways you have peace in your life is to believe the gospel. The gospel is so simple that it is difficult for most people to believe it. It's too truth. It's too true to be truth. <laughs> it's too good for it to be true. How can you tell me that if any man being Christ is a new creature? Apostle, don't tell me that. <coughs> Sorry. I need to still do some things. The new creation has the life of the Father. And the new creation has by revelation knowledge, by revelation knowledge, prayer becomes effective when you pray from revelation knowledge. I said prayer becomes effective when you pray from revelation knowledge, not praying from your experience, not praying from your feeling, not praying from your feeling. Don't pray from your feeling. Your feeling is not the word of God. Full cross of redemption realities, the things that Christ has done for you, the victory of Jesus. He knows. 
sometimes we'll get ourselves into trouble when we start thinking outside of God's word. We have many troubles. When we start thinking outside of God's word, then you start believing things you're not supposed to believe. And there are things you believe, if they are not in line with God's word, they become a stronghold. <laughs> wow. I said, there are things you believe, if they are not in line with the word of God, it becomes a stronghold in your life. And anytime you're trying to rise beyond that stronghold, you won't be able. Why? Because you believe it. A lot of people are dealing with stronghold. They believe systems that negate some realities. Their way of believing, the things they believe, you need to check what you believe. You need to check it. You need to check it. I live in a country where we have people preaching all kinds of gospel. There are people that don't watch them. I don't. There are, there are, there are teachings that comes with debts. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You know, many years ago, my wife was watching a particular preacher. Uh, then I told her, if you keep what you're watching. Few weeks later, she agreed there was death with it. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ liberates. It does not enslave. It's not ritual. You don't have to buy special water to be healed. Watch this. This is the water I drink here. If I'm thirsty, I will drink this water. That's why I kept it here. But when you see someone telling you this is what I expect. That only Jesus heals what I don't heal people. Maybe someone was sick and maybe God said, take this water and drink. And they drank the water. Doesn't mean we're going to make a doctrine out of it. Now you have people say, water all over the place and they call it healing water how do you people don't care about what happens to them they care about the results that they get and this is why if you are not rooted in the word of god you won't be able to detect falsehood That is why the Bible said, even the very, very elect, these are God's people, they come to the sea. True prayer has to be based on God's word, especially what Jesus has done. Jesus was a man of prayer, and he wants us to pray from redemption realities, who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, what we can do with the Christ in us. Hallelujah. My assignment is not, a, not, is not to impress you. Hallelujah. My assignment is not to impress you. I'm not saying to preach to impress you. That's not my job. My assignment is to bring God's word and then you check it and look whether what you're hearing is consistent with what God has said. Praying according to the word of God gives you edge over situations. It puts you in a position of authority as you can manifest the will of God. This meeting continues throughout this week from today to Friday, but i like you to Read the book of Colossians, Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians. They're just, 
they're not much. Maybe they amount to over close to 21 ch chapters or 22 chapters. And you read them and immerse yourself in those books. Colossians, Ephesians. And to know who Christ is, what you have in him, what you can do through the Christ in you, these are foundational for effective prayer life. Pray from what Jesus has done. Think from what Jesus has done. Speak from what Jesus and you will walk in victory. You're already healing in Christ Jesus. You already delivered in Christ Jesus. Next three. He said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us. You're already blessed in Him. And because you're blessed in Him, He wants you to function from the blessing. He wants you to think from the blessing. He wants you to, to do ministry from the blessing. He wants you to do business from the blessing. You're already blessed. Think from the blessing. Speak from the blessing. You are not about to be blessed. You are already blessed. And, and this is why you're different. It doesn't matter what someone else is doing. If you walk in the knowledge that you're already blessed, you are all rise above limitations. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is all I can take for this section today. Tomorrow, prayer school. I believe that at the end of these four days or five days, our prayer life will change. Don't forget that I said this. Pray according to the finished work of Jesus. Pray according to what you have in Christ, who you are in Christ, and what you can do with the Christ in you. It's when you're praying, be considering what Jesus has already done. And your prayer should be to enforce it. That's what your prayer should be, to enforce. When I'm praying, I'm enforcing what he has already done for me, especially when I pray in understanding. But when I pray in tongues in the spirit, I'm praying the perfect will of God. But when I start to pray in understanding, I need to pray according to what he has done. Whenever you read the Old Testament, be looking for Jesus. Not for religion, not for ritual, not for tradition, be looking for Jesus. There is Jesus in every chapter. By the Spirit, you'll find him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for this section this morning. I pray for everyone who is connected to us. I pray that our prayer life will go to another dimension. As we pray, we'll pray from the finished work of Jesus. We'll pray from the victory of Jesus. already. We are blessed in our going out. We are blessed in our coming in. Father, we thank you because we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are the partakers of the divine nature. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we're prayed. Amen. I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Faithman Teachings on YouTube. And also, you can watch me every day on finishworktv.com. And when you want to partner with this ministry, you can go to finishworktv.com and give at the Spirit of God will lead you. We're having this prayer school. It's going to be for five days, and today's the day one. We're back again tomorrow at the same time. I'd like you to invite a friend, and you will not remain the same. When we're done with this prayer school, your prayer life will change, and you be, you'll begin to pray with authority. You will know this is what belongs to me. If it is healing, I already have healing in me. Hallelujah. I call for the healing in me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Healing is already in you. Hallelujah. If it is the Lord, and you're going to have manifestation. Thank you, Father. Until our next broadcast, don't forget this. There is greatness in you. And Jesus is coming soon. Bye-bye.